Well, on this evening of dramatic breaking news with Cressida Dick resigning, I couldn't really have a better person to have come into the GB News pub to join me for Talking Pints than Jackie Smith. Jackie, welcome to Talking Pints. Cheers, Nigel. I apologise that the ice machine has broken. And no lemon either. And it's not good. It's <laughs> not good. But I'm on the Thatcher's cider because I don't want to be told by the Colston Four what I can and can't drink. Now... Before we talk about your life in politics and the big ups and downs that you had, it was sort of 48 hours ago that suddenly Sadiq Khan started talking in a, in a way about Cressida Dick that he never had mm. before. Were you surprised she resigned tonight or was it inevitable? Do you know, I was out for a run yesterday morning listening to the radio and hearing Sadiq Khan talking about her and I, I thought at the time... It's very difficult for a Met Commissioner to operate if she has lost the confidence of the Mayor of London. And then today, I think we heard, I mean, and previously, we heard Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, not having an awful lot of confidence in her. Mm. And I, so therefore, although it's a shock in some ways, because she'd only today said she wasn't going to step down, I think if you lose the confidence like that, and she said publicly that she feels the mayor had lost confidence in mm. her, mm. then it's not that surprising that she feels that she has to go. I mean, it's a hard job, of course it is. But, but it just, you know, it's very interesting. You know, here we've got a Labour mayor of London uh, and a Labour mayor to the left of the centre of the Labour Party and a Conservative Home Secretary who is to the right of the centre of the Conservative Party. I mean, you know, you were Home Secretary. I mean, it's a devil of a job, isn't it, being Met Commissioner? It's a, it is enormously difficult. And as we've seen over recent weeks and months, things happen in the Met that have national ramifications. Yeah. You know, there have been lots of things that have happened that I think have been utterly unacceptable. Um, you know, just last week, the WhatsApp messages, you know, I think shocked lots of people in the sort of hideousness of what people were saying. Yeah. But to a certain extent, Nigel, I felt a bit triggered, I have to say, by this. Triggered, today. as it were. <laughs> I knew you'd love oh, it. I knew you'd love it if I used the word <laughs> <laughs> Because um, when I was Home Secretary, of course, the Mayor of London was Boris Johnson. And um, yeah. we had a similar issue with Sir Ian Blair at that same time, where essentially... Um, and Boris, you know, in a way that was slightly inappropriate for a mayor, as you could argue, it's been for Sadiq Khan, stepped in and said, look, I've lost confidence. And at that point, Sir Ian had to go. and We had to appoint mm. a new Met Commissioner. So um, it's a strange setup because essentially the, the Commissioner is appointed by the Home Secretary in consultation with the Mayor of London. If there is not confidence probably from either of them, it's almost an impossible job to do. How was Boris to work with? <laughs> um, Come on, honest answer. Um, well, I do remember vividly a meeting, a Cobra meeting about security for the... Oh, what, he turned up, you mean, at the Cobra Well, piece? no, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. He did eventually, but he arrived, I think it was about a sort of 45-minute meeting. He turned up about 35 minutes late and thought I was going to go back to the beginning of the agenda... I'm afraid I wasn't willing to because, sorry, if you can't turn up on time for the Home Secretary... Oh, you were obviously a very tough Home Secretary. <laughs> well, look. Jackie, I want to take you back a little bit and thank you for responding to, to, to you know, and, and, and whether we agree that Cressida Dick did a good job or a bad job, it is a very difficult position. But I mean, I, ha I will just here. say, having worked with her, she has had a phenomenal career in mm. the police force and things have gone wrong recently. But I don't think that that should take away from her career, her position as the first female Met Commissioner, and I think she should be proud of her police, police career. No, that's a very fair point. Now, your political career started in the most extraordinary time. It was 1997. We'd had 18 years of Conservative rule. The country was ready for a change, and the Labour Party, which had been ripping itself to pieces a decade before, suddenly was in the hands of some very... Clever marketing people. Take a look at this. Things can only get better. Can only get, can only get, they get up a million. No, I know that things can only get better. Sometimes lose 
What did you vote in 1997, Nigel? Um, I can't remember, but... I, I, did you I, not vote for Tony Blair? No, I did didn't. You? I didn't. But I, I didn't, no. But I have to say that I remember at the time looking at that, seeing the use of that piece of music, seeing optimism being brought into politics and thinking, this is blooming brilliant. Mm. I thank goodness the Sun newspaper, which played a big role in that election, because yeah, the Sun backed Labour, and that was very important, mm -hmm. but Rupert Murdoch got a concession out of Blair, which was not to join the Euro without giving a referendum, and that was, that was why the Sun gave the support, and thank goodness for that. Otherwise, I think Blair would have taken us into the Euro, which I think would have been a catastrophe. Um, no, I admired, absolutely admired, what Campbell uh, did, what Mandelson did, what Blair did. It was brilliant. In electoral terms. I mean, I didn't know they were going to, you know, open the doors to the world in an extraordinary way. But it must have been. But you came in as part of that wave. And I remember the first morning of Blair in Downing Street. I and mean, it was almost like the second coming. I mean, <laughs> there was, and, and of course, you were part of the biggest ever female yeah. intake of MPs. Mm -hmm. But they must have been very exciting times those first couple of years. Oh, they were. But, I mean, I, I have to take slight issue with you. I Go think on. it was a bit more than marketing about it. You know, there had been a real effort to reform the Labour Party. I said, I did say... You did, to be no, fair, come on, you did come say on. that. But to be honest, that had happened before 1992 when I stood for the first time. And yet we couldn't get over the line so at Kinnock, that point. So Kinnock had done great work, yeah, actually. I yeah. mean, the battle against the Derek Hattons. Yeah. And, and he's never been given credit for that, actually. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. I get that. I get that. But suddenly you're there. You've got a huge majority. Yeah. A completely uncritical press. A Conservative Party that just rolled over on their backs and stayed there for years. I mean, they were extraordinary times, weren't they? It was a phenomenal time to be elected into Parliament, you're right. I mean, it had, we hadn't been certain, you know. I think now you look back on it and you think, oh, it was inevitable. But I can remember working enormously hard. Everybody was very, very careful. We had that pledge card, if you remember, with five in some ways, quite limited pledges on it because we needed to prove to people that we could be responsible with their money, that we could make a change, that we were about hope and the future. Um, and then, of course, we got into government. It was incredibly exciting, as you say. You know, I can remember the first time I went into Parliament and sat on those. Well, I didn't, in fact, sit on the benches because there's so many Labour MPs, we couldn't actually <laughs> sit down, um, which was, you know, brilliant. But... <laughs> um, but you know, in some ways, of course, as Tony Blair always made clear, we did a lot of stuff in government. But one of the problems about having a majority that big is that you don't... The size of your majority doesn't make things change quicker. It means you're likely to win votes in Parliament, yeah. but it still takes time to do the sort of reform that we wanted to do. And sometimes that led to a bit of sort of frustration from, our, from my own party as much as from the country. And you rise up through the ranks and you become the first ever female Home Secretary. What's day one like? Is it a bit daunting? Well, day one, Nigel, I woke up. Um, I, I got uh, appointed by Gordon Brown when he became the Prime Minister on the Thursday, uh, went into the Home Office. They began to do the briefings. Yeah. Friday morning, I got woken up by my private secretary saying, uh, well, there's been a terror attack. Thank goodness the bomb, which was in a car in Haymarket in London, has failed to go off. But you need to come in. So I had to go into the Home Office. I got greeted by people from the Office of uh, Security and Counterterrorism who said, when we come into your office, Home Secretary, it means that something serious is happening. And then over that weekend, that was the time when the terrorists, having failed to detonate the bomb in London, then drove up to Glasgow drove their jeep into the front of Glasgow Airport. So to say it was a sort of yeah. um, baptism of fire is, is true. But in some ways, thank goodness, there were no uh, um, injuries amongst the public. So I learnt very, very quickly that responsibility of Home Secretary is to keep the country safe. And it's the toughest job in British politics. It's always been the toughest job in British politics. Um, it's almost difficult to win, isn't it, really? <laughs> well, I, I said, uh, you know, it's an enormous honour to be given the job of keeping the British public safe, of securing our borders, of securing our, hmm. our, our country. But um, 
it's also about stopping bad things from happening. So every time something bad happens, it almost invariably falls under the auspices of the Home Office. So you yeah, wake up in the morning, you listen to the headlines, you think to yourself, mm, several of those things are my responsibility and I'm going to be getting a hard time when I go into the office today. But it's kind of, you know, your political career is kind of a bit like life, really, isn't it? You know, riding high, riding high in April, uh, the old Sinatra song. You're going to sing that? Shot down. Um, <laughs> maybe I have a few more of these, I might. Uh, shot down in May. Because it all, you know, goes wrong, the expenses scandal, and you find yourself in a difficult and embarrassing, I won't go into it, but embarrassing position. Mm -hmm. uh, the 2010 election comes. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, one minute, you're in one of the four great offices of state, and the next minute, it's all gone. Well, there's this cliche, isn't there, that all political careers end in failure. Yeah. They don't usually end in quite such a um, public <laughs> I'm sorry way. to laugh, but it was, <laughs> it was... No, that's the only thing you can do, Nigel. Yeah. And they don't usually end quite so publicly like that, which is tough on you as a politician, tough on your family. I mean, I was in a marginal seat, so I sort of, in one way, I almost always knew that when Labour went out of government, mm. I would mm. go out of government as mm. well. And in some ways, you know, I mean, I think people do heroic work in opposition, but I'm not sorry that I haven't had to be an opposition MP because it's a tough old job, that. Um, and I've been able to sort of build since 2010 an interesting yeah, new and you've career. Done, you've done Strictly Come Dancing, as I Indeed. mentioned earlier. It wasn't, you weren't a huge success, <laughs> it, but, you, but, you did, but you did it, which is brave. Broadcasting, mm -hmm. which you clearly enjoy very much. But I, a couple of things. You seemed to be very committed to the European Union I was. project, which new, La <laughs> which, which, which new Labour was. Yeah. And I was astonished when Blair was president, uh, the six-month presidency, when I met you know, nearly all of the cabinet that were coming through Brussels and Strasbourg, and I was astonished at their level of devotion and belief in it. I mean, you were almost in mourning, weren't you? Political mourning mm. after the Brexit result. Have you recovered <laughs> Look, let me let, I'll let you into a secret, Nigel. My now ex-husband, this isn't the reason why he's ex, but yeah. he voted to leave Did the he? European Union. And one of the things he said to me was, he said, but Jackie you used to go to European councils and you used to text me and say, you know, oh, God, this is, I can't get the things done I want to do. This is a, this is a bit of a nightmare. And I said to him, yeah, but we were in the room. We were in the discussions. We were having some influence. Being outvoted. Um, but we were, but we were there, and we were making a difference. Now. I was there too. And what's more, of course you were. Yeah. And um, people were, and in the on the international stage, we were larger and more influential. Is Do you my really view. still believe? That? Yeah, I really right. still believe. Well, I, mean, I, I think everything no, we've seen since the show. I'm not going to replay that debate, but I think actually now, in terms of foreign policy, we're very much more powerful. I want to ask you one last mm. one, one last political question. Okay. Since 2000, the British population has risen by 8 million. 84% mm -hmm. of that is directly because of policies that New Labour put in place and the Conservatives followed. 84% of that is because of migration, immigration, into the United Kingdom. Has that been a good thing for our country? Look, I think largely migration has been a good thing for our country. I don't favour free uh, and, and completely open borders. You know, I believe that we should have controlled migration, but I think we should do that on the basis of fairness. I think, incidentally, when people are fleeing persecution, we should welcome them into our country as a tolerant and welcoming place. You know, one of my one of the things that I disagree with you about is that I think sometimes you've used that issue to raise people's concerns in a way that hasn't actually been reasonable. Of course, but listen... I so how many is reasonable, pictures. Jackie? No, how many is reasonable? I, I, I don't think it's necessarily about numbers. I think it's about... And I made this clear when I was Home Secretary. Mm. I think it's about welcoming in people who can make a contribution to this country, who are willing to stick by our rules, who are willing to speak our... our to, to speak English, all but you have that. to be able to train them. No, to all do of that. that. All so of that's all of those crucial. things I believed in. But also, yeah. when people are fleeing persecution, we should be the type of country that opens our arms to them. We always have been. Mm, yeah, except, over the, over except the you were perfectly willing to stand in front of pictures of people who well, arguably were well, fleeing persecution and, and it turned to make out, people scared. It turned about out, it. sadly, I was right for the wrong reasons. Well, no, I don't think because because now they come because now these young men come across the English Channel in boats. Um, they're the same people that came through and they've been living in Germany for two or three years and now they come across. So I was, 
I was right for the wrong reasons. But we can disagree on that, because I think it is about numbers. But finally, 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 what next? Well, I am I am very happy now, as well as the broadcasting stuff that I do. I also chair two big NHS trusts. I care a lot about that. I mean, what a difficult time our NHS staff... That's going to keep staff, you busy. Uh, indeed. Our NHS staff have been through an incredibly difficult time. Now the job is, how do we get the waiting list down? How do we support our staff? How do we continue to grow that? And I'm, you know, I'm having fun, Nigel, and Good. being here with you has Good. been lovely. I'm having fun too. Thank you for joining <laughs> me on Talking Pints. That was Jackie Smith. <laughs>